Yo, what's up everyone? Hello, hello. Welcome back, welcome back. A very eventful day in the market. Um, I'm just going to give everyone just a few minutes just to get into the stream, get settled, and we will cover over the lesson tonight on supply and demand, right? Today was a very key lesson in regards to your trading day because it Stocks don't just, they don't just go up or down, right? Everyone expects days like this. If it, I mean, these are, these days, they're a daydream, right? These are super simple, right? Super simple. And, uh, I mean, they are passing out money. I mean, this is a short every pop kind of day. If you look at, you know, off the open, hey, this popped up, shorted it. Popped up, shorted. Popped up, short, same thing the rest of the day. Even these little green candles, Okay. But trading is not that simplistic. We know that. I mean, look at yesterday. A lot of you got chopped up yesterday. Okay. And then today, I can only imagine what retail traders went through, right? But I'm really talking about those retail traders that were not prepared and did not have a plan, right? We know that we go through this pre-market prep plan Every morning at 8.30 in the morning, I draw out all of the supply and demand zones that are most recent to the intraday price action that we will interact with on that current day, as well as setting, you know, directional zones, situational uh, kind of contracts, right? You can see the two instances here. We've covered them quite a bit the last couple of days. That's the whole point of this. I really want to reiterate how simple these concepts are and how much uh you as a retail trader over complicating these concepts okay so yeah you know go by all means gonna write uh, i'm sure that if you looked at it from my standpoint right um i do take a lot of trades yes but I also am aiming to trade or to get into the trade that's going to work out for me. I don't care to take a small loss and then it followed by me winning on the opposing side. You guys saw me earlier today trading this range and I was trading both calls and puts making, you know, 50, 60, 70 dollars per contract on both sides. And break even or green on both sides, right? And and that that kind of scrambles um with a lot of retail traders especially newer to options now today you know i i really looked at today with a lot of value right with a lot of i mean you know i know in the house of stacks right we had a very good kind of trading session in regards to knowing just where our zones were i mean it, it was the pre-market high and pre-market low zones all day so um, just letting people flood in here. I don't want any, you know, I don't want to have to reiterate a few things. Um, remember, I will be talking about 84% rule. Okay, you can type in like exclamation point 84%. It'll pop up. There's also, I think, uh, the YouTube channel right there that has a few of the concepts that I talk about. No supply and demand video yet. Um, just like any of my recordings, I do it all in one one rip right i don't have an editor or anything so um i'm just gonna have to plan it out right i've written a whole page of notes just like i do for every live session um and uh just before we begin i guess i'll just go through while people are people are entering into the stream right very nice seeing a lot of wins today okay nice job scoop stonks 130 bucks on his nvidia call uh ace 566 bucks missile frog 5.4 percent NXBX took a little tag, right? It's okay. We'll try again tomorrow. Not a big deal. 100 bucks. It happens. A uh, little tag here. Dragon Sun, 3%. K. Kinney. This guy. Look at him. You know, I, I said I, I teach everyone in the same pace. I teach them to the point and dry. This was the day after I had that kind of conversation with him in the Profits and Percents channel. You guys can go, you know, you can search my name. You can search my name and then put in profits and percents, and you'll see what I stated about this. And look what he's hitting, right? Um, I think we can pull it up. I, I don't want to, you know, this is not to embarrass anyone, okay? Uh, right? Look at before. 
I don't know. I, I think, are they going now? Maybe they, they got deleted. I think they got deleted. Well, that's okay. Yeah, okay. Well, you know, very nice work. Um, I think that's way too back, way too far back now. One second, sorry guys. Okay, nope, that's yesterday. Today? No, nope, still yesterday. This is today. Okay, back. Right, good work, K. Kenny. Keep it up, right? Keep your chin up. Uh, that's okay, square one, right? Probably trading a smaller account. Water hands, 356 bucks on the day. Very nice. Minnesota Tom, 5.7%. Congratulations, brother. You've been killing it. Laying those bricks day by day, right? It's okay. As a trader, we know that it... It could have always been more. We're always going to leave money on the table, but knowing that we will be okay, you know, leaving money on the table really removes a lot of the FOMO from our trading. Okay, Hannah, 290 bucks on the day. B crawl, a little tag. Praveen, right, $269. It's very good. Ace bumped it up to 1500 bucks on the day. Congratulations. Remember, I'm always going to shout out Ace. This guy is a very hard worker, right? Working a full-time job and trading when he can. Um, all right. Nando, 1200 bucks. I forgot. I needed to upgrade Nando the other day. And Ryu, right? Ryu came up with about a $1,200 win right here. $1,190 win. Congratulations, dude. Ryu was the first member, right? He's the only one with a white name. Uh, the first member in the House of Stacks, and it's been so great to see his kind of process and journey along the way, right? I remember he was trading one contract at a time on the queues. Now he's trading some, you know, looks like uh, one contract of Tesla at a time, and uh, was fantastic to see him make that. And a uh, nice little tag from Mish, not a big deal, Skinny Toaster, still going up. Uh, RPTX, $1,500 on the day, right? KC, very nice. Uh, Smoke Hage, little tags here or there. Greg Brady, 3%. Sal, Sal joined the boot camp that we had with Spy Guy. And uh, look at his month, right? Trading and back testing over and over. Everyone is like, oh, I don't want to post PL calendars like this, right? It, you should keep your lessons small, right? And while you're learning and back testing, you know, it, it needs to be small size so that you're comfortable enough to trade this. Okay, nice uh, from Scallop, 63 bucks. Elastic Fox, little tag. Uh, Hanson Ford, 120 bucks, and 8% from Wonder Bread, and Preach, 63 bucks, or 12% on the account. Congratulations, guys. Especially on a day like today, I know that retail traders get chopped up trading supply and demand. They call this chop, right? Choppiness, it's too, you know, we're getting baited, there's no trends. Well, that's the market, right? Have we not traded? Look at today. Right, I'll clear this out so it's visually pleasing for you guys, right? Consolidation day. Well, didn't we just see this like a few days ago? Oh, what's that? Just a little, you know, they vary. Obviously, they're going to vary. Look, we can go through. Okay. Consolidation prior to the rip up. Consolidation day consolidation towards the end look at this day you didn't even really move anywhere consolidation you held that floor i mean guys we've traded days like this you have to adapt right you must adapt look at this day doesn't that look like today this is an options contract from today look at that it's the freaking same it's the same so why did everyone freak out on a day like today well it's because of improper planning and the bias to trading momentum or trend trades okay so moving through here um i will be touching over the concepts of supply and demand right what is supply and demand well this is not you know derived from trading uh the stock market but this is a basic market concept applicable to all things bought and sold Okay, but uh, demand is buying at wholesale prices and aim to resell at premium prices, right? This is where prices are desired. This is where we're like, hey, I would love to buy at that price because it would be, it would be deemed profitable for me. All right, the supply total amount where sellers have a spe uh, specific uh, 
excuse me, specific commodity available for sale, right? So these sellers are what? They're buying in demand at wholesale prices, looking to offload these products, commodities, stocks, contracts, whatever, at retail prices, right? For what? A profit. It's, 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 it's simple. I mean, you guys go, okay, you go and buy a pack of waters, right? Pack of waters. I mean, I've used this same analogy, metaphor, whatever, right? I've used this um, plenty of times. It's a great example. Okay, you go and buy a pack of water, 24 pack of water costs you four or five bucks. Let's just say five dollars for this instance. You go and sell. So you bought them, right, at a desirable price, cheaper price because you're buying a multiple, right, in a wholesale kind of de ordeal. And you look to offload these water bottles, okay, selling them at retail prices at one dollar each water bottle. There's 24 water bottles, right? Twenty four dollars. You net. Okay, $19 profit, right? You take $19 profit, all right? It's the same thing with these contracts. I mean, if you look at today, okay, it pops back to this demand right here. Hey, these contracts were most recently bought here from someone else around 374 375 and they were sold before over $5. That means this contract in regards to risk, which was low, was a good deal. Okay, so, but how do you identify these supply and demand zones, right? And, and it's the same for, you know, if you're a short seller, right? Your supply that, you know, the buyer supply zone is your demand zone as a short, okay? If you're, or if you're taking puts, but how do you identify them? Well, I want to show you before we get into drawing them, um, the plans from this morning, okay? Uh, I don't know if you guys pay attention, maybe not. Um, let's see. One of the least interacted with things on Twitter for me are charts, right? Which is interesting because it's like, hey, you know, why wouldn't you want to learn actually something that is a visual kind of process? And you can see here, let me move this to the hourly. So it's the same. And I'll move this up here so it's out of the way. Okay. So you can see here, right? We it's the same chart. It spikes up. You have all of the same zones. Look at this zone: 315, 313, 310, right? 315, 313, 310. You also have this 317 pre-market low, 3 uh, 320 pre-market high, right? Same zones, and then this one above. And I, I, I list these every single morning. Make sure you check these out, okay? I put bulls aiming to defend the pre-market low, right? Well, that's what they did off the open. And when bears have the opportunity, what are they looking to defend? Always ask myself, where are buyers and sellers located on the chart? Well, I said here at 9.09 a.m., 21 minutes before the open, we made these plans all together. If you were able to watch it during the live stream this morning, you saw the plan pan out during the intraday. Hopefully, you you know I ask you guys to plot these zones yourself so you, you can compare or at least understand and see what I'm looking at and why I mark these every single day. It's it, it's habitual. I must do this every single day. Okay, and then I said shorts were looking to reject right practically defend the pre market high at three twenty. Right here, 320. Why would they want to defend that? Well, because of our uh, because of our zones. All right. If I go back to, I drew the zone off the 10 minute. Right. I don't know if you guys remember the lessons that I've been going over, um, but for supply and demand, there's two instances. Okay. You have one, the large upper wick zone. Okay. Or two, see, or large bottoming wick. It doesn't matter as long as it's a large wick near a reversal point. This popped up reverse down created a large wick this is where sellers are located popped up reverse down now i have data here telling me that sellers are located right here right over 322 there's also the instance of i mean look at this this kind of lined up right upper wick and this pre-market low small consolidation i knew that this previous supply had flipped once it was broken and based upon now it was going to act as demand right why is that these shorts right here shorts entered about 317 
they don't want to cover up here for a large loss they will begin to cover where they can break even right not at a major loss but break even right and look they cover here cover cover and it's met with buyers adding into that pressure okay the other method is um you know like small tight body consolidation so i would say let's see damn it let me try to give you an example here okay right you see this small bodies and they're tight in a consolidation range you can mark this range right someone is buying and selling here what happens obviously you can see the next day it is rejected okay well what about this small tight body consolidation prior i mean you know before a large move in either direction this could have gone up or down okay draw the high and the low of the small tight body consolidation range and you can see this was held the following day you can use this data in pre-market to identify where your best risk to uh, reward is okay so going over today's price action how could you um how could you have used supply and demand to your advantage today right you can see i drew the zone off the upper wicks i drew the zone off the lower wick I drew this lower wick right here. You can see this lower wick right there. Okay, upper wick zone, upper wick right here. Small tight body consolidation prior to a large move down. It was popped up, it was respected. This is a zone. It wasn't met today, but I still want to know where buyers and sellers are going to be located. You, we can all see why these zones were, um, you know, created, why I drew them. Okay. Well, what happens? How can you trade this? Same thing. Like I do, this is the same strategy. A lot of people were DMing me asking about this after I posted uh, the update. Right? You know, you we can see here. All right, we posted this. And then the update was, hey, look, these same zones respecting look at where we were buying and selling buying and selling right within these zones risking the low of the day in demand and risking the high of the day or the pre-market high level as our risk for our puts okay so how can you trade this every morning i i write the same concepts here right i mark you know, someone was like, I guess, trolling or whatever. Hey, you know, stocks go up, stocks go down. They do, right? It's as simple as that. It's not a joke, okay? Looking at this, price pushed down. It rejected off of this supply. What's going to happen in this zone? Does anyone have an idea? What's going to happen in that zone? What should I expect as a trader? Okay, I wouldn't say so much buyer stepping in because it is in hindsight, but Gunner has the right thing. It's either going to reject it or it's going to break it. This is in hindsight. I can't look at the chart and be like, hey, buyers are going to step in because they did already, right? That's creating a bias to the zone. I need to remain unbiased, and that's why I write these plans out. I know that as a trader, keeping my mindset in an unbiased state means that I have the advantage over the biased fools, right? That means, hey, I can look at both long and short opportunities and be able to take advantage of that. So that's why I always uh, write out, right? Break and base below the pre-market low demand or bounce off the pre-market low demand, okay? Now, I feel like uh, there was another example here from like a pre-market level. Let me just look before I continue to where it was broken and actually based upon right here pre-market low pre-market low right i mean to a t to a t it's broken you can see it's broken right there big bearish engulfing candle breaking the pre-market low 
pushes down. When it retraces, it breaks it, bases using the previous support as resistance. This is a move from 321 all the way down to 318. It's a three point capture. You crack a lower low, it tells you to scale out here, right? That's why these levels are very key. They're very important. Okay, so moving forward. Okay, we know that well, I just showed you an example of a break in base below the pre-market low level. You would you will not always get it, but many times you do. Okay, so one or two things are gonna occur when it pushes down here. Okay, it bounces out of it. It's absorbed by buyers, right? But what also do you see? Remember, I said that we need. How many levels of confluence before taking a trade? Two to three. Well, what do you see in that demand zone? That's already one. I mean, it's a freebie right there. What do you see in this demand zone? Pre-market low. Okay, that's good, Mish. A tweezer bottom, right? That's, that's correct. Jalapeno, right? So you have the demand zone. You have pre-market low and a tweezer bottom forming on the five minute and the ten minute. Why are you buying puts in demand? Right? What has the best risk to reward at that moment in time? That's what you need to always be asking yourself. Okay, now of course it's on the 10 minute. We can go back to the 5 so it's a bit more, you know, universal. But you can see here, 5 minute, right? Tweezer, or tweezer bottom. You also get a tweezer bottom right here, okay? So, obviously, weigh the risk to reward. When it popped up here, right what's gonna happen guys i think gunner already explained that to us just a moment ago it's either going to break out of it or it's going to reject it just like i've lo uh, listed here right and what happens you see a big rejection wick on the pre-market high the following candle forms remember you can look at the three minute as well to get something a bit early the three minute gave you a tweezer top and I did not, I not tell you how to trade tweezer tops yesterday, right? Uh, tweezer top on the three minute or the five minute. The following candle, whatever time frame you're trading, you use the high as your risk. And it, one is either going to stop you out or two, you're going to make a ton of money. It rejects it again. Boom. Pushes down to demand right in this moment. You see a lot of bottoming wicks in this demand zone. Let me expand this out so it's a bit more visible. Okay. Bottoming wick here, it pushes up, right? Now, many of you are like, hey, you know, would I have really taken that, this or that? It's really dependent upon what you want to do, okay? This is technically not as close to this pre-market low level, meaning you have you're have you taking on much more risk here. But an aggressive entry, right? More The more risk you have, the also the more reward opportunities you have. But also, you know, it can lead to losses and things that are unnecessary, right? I want to talk about... The fact that traders, you know, I, I went over the, um, Ron Burgundy, we're also on Twitch too, if you want to check it out. Oh, I'm on caps. I mean, I don't know, like, can I change the Discord quality, right? I mean, let me look at this. You guys said it was like bad every time I, I change it, right? Voice and video, how do I do this? I swear I'm like an old man. Um, share your oh stream quality. Okay, look what what do I do here? HP stream quality right? Fifteen frames. I mean that's kind of low, and then I have it at ten eighty. I don't know what to do. like. Do I leave it or is it does it mess it up? That's what I'm saying. Do I up this? But you guys said it it looks bad. Look, let's do sixty. Does that look better? Does that look better? Or bad? Better? Oh, okay. Dude, what the fuck? We've been streaming in 15, man. I got the freaking tube TV. Like, I'm in the 90s. Wow. Damn, dude. I don't know any. I mean, I'm telling you guys, like, I'm really bad about computers sometimes. <laughs> okay, so moving forward, okay, moving forward. 
um, you can see this three minute, right? You're risking the high here. One or two things are going to happen. Well, what are my confluences? Ask myself, hey, how extended are we from the EMA? Super extended. Okay, so that gives you, a, uh, that merits something to take puts because we know that price will interact and come back to that EMA at some point in the day. Okay, <laughs> damn guy. <laughs> um, and then you have the pre-market high, so that's two. We're in supply, that's three. And you have a tweezer top, that's four. Who took calls here? I mean, you know, we're not here to shame anyone, but who took calls here in supply, right? Who took calls in supply? Oh, maybe chart hashria. I can probably fix this too. Oh, okay, never mind. Nope. Right? Okay, Nasda did, right? Why would you take this in supply? Right? And and I just wanted to talk uh to and I'm not, not this is a rhetorical question. I know why you took it. I'm gonna explain why you took it. Okay. You took this because you saw some big, pretty green bars in your face. Right? You saw some very nice attractive looking bars that your mind said hey this means other other traders are making money and i'm not in the trade we're i think this is going to rip higher right I, i'm going to take calls why why do i think this is going to rip higher what's the the basis behind it i don't see a pullback i don't see a demand zone i don't see a key level that's going to you know show me the base risk to reward off of okay it's a lack of a thesis no, you do not enter the trade as soon as it comes into the zone. Absolutely not. I'm going to show you guys. Yeah, man. Dude, I can't believe that I've been tra like streaming on 15 frames. We've been doing this for like nine months. Like, I don't know what's like. You guys said it was bad at one point, and I just And I tried it multiple times, and it just like, I got the same kind of result. So. Uh, how can you trade this, right? How can you trade a zone? Well, I'm going to show you on the options contract chart. If this pushed into demand, right? What did I say here? Yeah, I know. I feel like I got a brand new Discord now, right? Um, what did we say here, right? It's either going to bounce off of it. So, looking at the 318 or 319 calls, we posted this, all right? Right? We posted this this morning. So let's check out the 318 calls. You get the low a day support. Right? This is the high from yesterday. Well, we know how to draw uh, supply and demand zones, right? I can draw this lower wick right here, which I will. I'm going to draw this small tight body consolidation for a zone. This is a zone. It's a peak, right? It pops up, it pivots. It pivots, small tight body consolidation prior to what? A large move up or down, okay? So, let's extend this out. Do you guys see how many opportunities you had today? All right, now I wanna touch back on another analogy in regards to supply and demand, right? Um, I don't know, maybe you guys have been scolded by like your parents or whatever. Uh, Twitch stream is blurry. Maybe uh, RM fam, you, um, I mean, it doesn't look like I'm dropping any frames. Maybe a little bit here. I don't know. Uh, check your quality. I don't know if you've bumped it up or not. Okay. Okay. Oh, it looks good. Thanks, Daddy. Awesome. Okay. So. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been yelled at your mom or your dad, you know, when you were younger talking about like, you know, we have food at home, right? So like, let's say like there's a vending machine, it's two bucks for a bag of chips. Do you have chips at home? You have a much larger bag of chips at home for two bucks, right? Your parents are going to tell you to wait saying, hey, we have food at home. Why? Because it was cost effective to them to eat at home, right? Comparatively to buying out of that vending machine, which is what? We're buying out of convenience. We're buying because it's right there right now, right? We have no discipline, no obedience when we take that kind of choice. Same thing goes into trading uh, options or trading stocks, whatever you're going to trade, okay? So meaning, whenever I see this on a call chart, right? Let me, let me uh, change the, the drawing set. 
Um, whatever. We'll just change it to that. Right. All right. So when I see this, this for me means do not touch this. You will see this in the options contract chart. This means, I mean, unless we're create, you know, crazy trending or whatever, this means do not fucking touch this contract. I know where our buyer is going to step in, right? Well, they have all the time on their hands. They don't need to have any sense of, uh, you know, rushing to get into a trade, right? Um, they don't need the convenience of getting in when, every, when they think everyone else is making money or whatever. They'll sit and buy it at the same price. Well, remember that zone we drew? Where do they come back and buy it? Now, let's say, hey, oh, dude, I'm Joe Schmo. I, I, this is ripping up. Everyone's making money. I think I'll, I'll buy a few contracts up here at 550 Well, now you're down $150 a contract at the low, right? When you should have waited to buy when these buyers stepped in. Now, how can you bid into this, okay? How can you bid into this? Sure, right? Most of the time when I'm taking a trade, I do not like the upper area. This would be, a, uh, I guess, an aggressive entry for supply and demand zones. I really like the bottom half. I have taught you guys like about the descending bids, okay? So like, you know, one, two, the heavier bids near the low, right? So, uh, you know, looking at this 3.74, so 30 per, or 10% of that, you know, we'll mark this 10% of that. We hit 10% right here, right at 3.4 is 10% of a loss at the very low of this. We'll mark it as red and I'll make a cute little note for you guys, right? Stop loss 10 around 10%. I mean, it is at 10%, but if you get a little bit higher entry, okay? Right, let me uh, make this a little bit larger. All right, so there we go. You have your stop loss. This is your main entry, right? Lower portion in the demand zone. These are your other scale ins. Okay, this is how you can bid into or take a trade based off of the options contract chart or supply and demand you are one either going to take a 10 percent loss okay or two 10 percent loss is down here you can see right you can see look at this little box you see where it says 3.86 percent now it says 3.3 3.43 down here at this red line 9.88 percent loss okay so you're risking 10 percent to make ultimately 44 percent quick math right one to four and a half risk to reward right one to four and a half risk to reward um jd claire um i actually found this strategy out solely through the fact that i love trading I, i'm not going to say this actually because people will take this um to the wrong extent right um trading zero dtes a lot of people have issues trading them due to the fact of like i'm scared of theta i'm scared of this i'm going to show you tomorrow i know it's fomc so it's going to be pretty choppy i'm looking for it to be choppy because i love trading chop on zero days due to the fact that market makers use the greeks to manipulate these options contracts meaning that they will hold a floor very very low and, you know, based off of Theta and all of your other Greeks, it will come back and they will absorb at the same level, right? Okay, at the same level. We have done this plenty of times, right? Ron, I mean, so many members in the group use this, right? Ronnie, Ranking, Dowdy, HP, right? Saul Goodman trades Apple with it. I mean, it's so beneficial. It's how you're supposed to trade zero DTEs. Right. But the problem is, is that everyone has this like perma bull rocket kind of mentality in in regards to trading zero days. And that's why they get swamped on it. Right. Why? Because they do this. When they see a zero DTE rocketing up, they're like, oh, shit, it's time to buy. And that's why you're losing as an options trader. When you see the options contract or any chart like this and you're like your your uh, brain is thinking hey it's time to buy that's why you're failing be patient right 
have that, hey, we have food at home mentality. This is home. This is where the food is located. Okay, so wait for the price to come back. Be patient. You have all day to freaking trade. Okay, so going through another example that I traded. I mean, look at all day, guys. They held this. Look at the 10% stop loss. Some of you may have gotten wicked out, but this was the 10% stop loss on this green entry here, 374 all day. How many opportunities did you have? One, two, and three opportunities to make 25 to 30% or more on a pretty, um, you know, I'd say more expensive than usual contract on the queues. Okay. Yeah, dude, that Chick fil A was good too. All right, now going back here, I took another trade using supply and demand, right? This was intraday supply and demand. Uh, these are puts. This is at 11.10, so let me look at the one-minute chart at 11.10. I'm going to change the drawing set so I can actually see it. Oh, great, right here. So I want someone in Twitch. I know that all, the entire Discord is going to know this. No, I do not do one-on-ones. This is as close to a one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe in the near future, right? Probably thinking of another boot camp here soon. Um, also going to release uh, or, you know, have some boot camp videos available to traders uh, pretty soon. The ones that I did, I can just give you guys a peek at the boot camp that I did with Spy Guy. And then I'll have this available, right, to those who are interested. Um, but right here. Right? EMA basics, options, contracts, and options chart. This is everything that you need, okay, for a basic EDU into options. Supply and demand. Pivot points. VWAP, 200 EMA. Top setups and application. Scaling into entries. Scaling into trades. My pre-market channel strategy. Trading psychology. Tying it all together. Psychology and TA. And final notes. I did this uh, about two months ago with Spy Guy. These are all my videos, just myself talking. They're all about an hour, an hour and a half long. Uh, no, the bootcamp will be available. It'll be a different kind of route to uh, get access to those. Okay. So, moving forward, right? I want someone in Twitch. I know the Discord's going to know this answer, right? What are the two basic phases of price action? Okay, what are the two basic phases of price action in Twitch? I know I know the Discord's got it. Thank you, guys. Nope, not impulsive and correction. Nope. Trending and consolidation, right? DJ Matsu, right? And uh, Jay Sandman, right? I actually got it before him. Consolidation and trend. Trend and range. Same thing. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go over that concept rather rather uh quickly here okay trend consolidation trend consolidation trend small consolidation so on and so forth right trending consolidates it trends so if i know it's going to trend and i know that price is going to have to slow down at some point as a day trader, I need to prepare myself this is not just going to continue into momentum i mean at some points in the trading, you know, calendar, we do have these anomalies where price does just rip up all day or sell off all day. We've seen it. But consistently, we know that price will trend and then consolidate. Who lost money here after 11 o'clock? Right? Majority of retail traders. They all lost money here because why? They were trading a trend style of trading during a consolidation phase well i mean it gives it to you it peaks up it pulls back it gives it to you very early when it pulls back where does it bounce well it bounced right here what is that guys i mean you had this like from this point on hey it popped up that's the high pushes down and it bounces there's the low mark your pivot points always i mean that's a, a basic consolidation channel well someone hit the puts up here marking the upper wicks a short is sitting right there with his stop loss above 320. Okay, so I see this. When it pulls back, okay, to the high of day, I have best risk to reward for what?
right? Best risk reward for what? For puts, right? Because my stop loss is above here, right? Maybe I give it 20 cents. Maybe I give it 30, 40, 50 cents, whatever, okay? So what did we trade here today? The 318 puts. Why? Because we're at 320 as the high. 319 would be in the money here, and 318 is out there. I'm trading the first you know, three contracts typically out of the money. So I chose the 318s for no particular reason. Um, I check out the options contract chart. I see that it bounced here again. When it pushes up, we take entry here, right about 340, 330s, 340s. Okay, it pushes down. We scale a little bit, right, from 340 to 360. That's about 10% almost. When it pushes back up, many traders get stopped out right here. But what's the rule? What's the rule about stops majority of the time? Yep, exactly, Saul. What's the rule about our stops? Candle close, okay, it's not bad, right? 10%. I mean, I, I do a little bit more than 10% sometimes. Okay, close above wick. Um... Let okay, JD Claire's got it, dude. This guy's learning quick, right? Let the chart stop you out. If you have a good enough entry, right? I had an entry here, right? Three point three three, three point four. Let's just say three point four for those who you know got a little bit higher. Ten percent is where? Ten percent is right here. Three hundred seven. I actually had a tighter stop loss. This was my red line, right there. Look at that stop loss. That's only 7%. So I risked 7% on the intraday. If you could have went a little bit lower down for 10%, right? I risked 7% on the intraday to make what? 17%, right? And eventually, we make... I mean, I, I get stopped out towards the end here, and I retake them. Shout out to shiny objects, right? We make another 30% right there. But you can see this zone is respected here, respected here. And also respected here. If I extend this out, you can see that it was respected. Okay. Stop loss below. We have a target here, a target here. And on this rally up, I got out majority because what? We sell into momentum. Okay. We sell into momentum. Where we enter? In the demand zone, right? For the options contract. In the puts, you'd be entering supply based on the options or on the underlying chart. But right here, guys, there's your whole box. Okay, you're risking 10 to 15% on your options contract. Take the trade if you're if you have a good plan always. Yeah, risk 30 for 7. Dude, crazy. Uh the box, right? I I uh clicked the mouse wheel. Okay. Yeah, the problem is following the plan. Well, Mad Max, why do traders not follow their plan? Gunner, Gunner's quick with it, right? He's, he's been going through it probably, right? That shit stung a little bit when I said that. Okay? But that's good. That's good. I mean, guys, I've been there. I've sat there, lost sleep over trading, right? Lost my mind over this. Felt like I was in a, a constant kind of cyclical, like, you know, fucking uh, sadistic just wheel of suffering. I've been there. I was. I've been in ruts, dry periods, right, or droughts. Uh, yeah, exactly, Mish. Depression, right. Good things come to those who are patient and persistent. Okay, everyone's gonna go through that. I've told you before. Trading is a vetting process. Everyone experiences that suffering. Okay that you may be going through right now or will eventually be going through, right? I know at some point in my trading career, it's not all going to be, you know, just rainbows and butterflies, right? There's going to be, um, I mean, I've talked with Hugh about this before, right? Hugh Henny, he was like, you know, making more and more money, you, 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 in, you know, inevitably put or putting yourself at higher risk, right? You know, what you're not comfortable with today, maybe losing a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, right? Well, eventually for you to progress, you have to be comfortable losing $500, losing $1,000 per trade, not on the day, but per trade, right? Losing $5,000. Well, a lot of traders are risking $5,000 to make $60,000, right? Or $50,000. You know, I mean, as we progress on this journey, 
you must be able to numb yourself and remove the hold that money has on you, right? That financial hold that it has on your emotions, um, I mean, that makes or breaks a trader at the end of the day, you know, and if you're having a tough time uh, because you're not making money or, you know, you're you're like, you know, I study so much and I'm not I'm not gaining anything and I this or that, right? Why are you trading to make money when you're new? You need to be studying, right? Use the tools that are available to you, right? You can paper trade if you like. A lot of people are against it. But if you're new, why would you be putting yourself on hot paper, okay? So that you begin your, your trading kind of journey with, with a fat loss that you feel like that you can never overcome? I mean, you know, uh, there, there's no reason to prove yourself. There's absolutely no reason at all to be like, hey, for me to be a trader, I need to make X amount of hundreds or thousands of dollars a day within the first three months. That's unrealistic. Okay? So, going through, we saw this is how you trade the consolidation range exactly after this trend. Okay? You yourself, putting your, your, um, your trading kind of mentality in a state where you are no longer going to be held by bias and allowing yourself to trade both sides... Right, I think I was trading at this point. I'm gonna say 315, or what is it, 318 calls 320. I think I was trading 320. Oh wait, I don't know. What do I? What was I trading? Maybe the 321s. Let's see what drawings are on there. Yep, right here, 11. So look at this. Right, we grab our entry right here, 11.50. Okay, you can see the risk down here, 299. I'm stopping out on the support, right? This isn't even the best entry. I should have just bid it in here. From right there, that's 8.5%. Okay, so not bad of a loss, right? Up here, that's about 16%, 15%. So it's 1 to 2. For you to be profitable in the long run, you only need 1 to 2. Yes, you should strive for more, holding runners, whatever. But 1 to 2 is fantastic for a new trader. Right, and that's exactly what we do on the calls. I am trading calls and puts during consolidation ranges. Why? Because it gives me twice as much opportunity. And if I'm wrong on one, right, like we were, the calls stopped us out right here. But the puts, right, we retake them, right, pushing out right here, 340s, 350s, and it squeezes, or not squeezes, I guess, because they're puts, right? But it it surges right here. All right, from 350 to 450, that's a hundred dollar per contract trade in four or five minutes. Okay, solely looking at this. Yeah, there you go. How do you get those different time frames at the top? Right, so you want to go to um, your settings. You go to my tools. Press on each chart. Make sure it's on each chart. You go to the time right here, time frame, let's say you want five days, one minute, whatever, customize it, maybe you want 20, 15 days, whatever you want, whatever time frame. Uh, go to style, press save style, type in whatever, okay? This will be popped up because you selected it to be on each chart for your My Tools. Go to each of these buttons here. Let's say, hey, I want to change the trend line. Go to change button action. Go to the style. Select the time frame. How do I enter trades quickly and put? Uh, how do I enter? Qu wait. How do I enter trades quickly and puts stop quickly? Um, I think you're asking how am I trading both long and short quickly, right? I have four monitors, and on my execution screen, right, I have three active traders up. I used to just have two, but now I have three active traders up. In case I'm trading another ticker aside from the queues or, or whatever, right? So I have three active traders up. One's for long, one's for short. Uh, I remember calls, one's for put, same thing, right? And then uh, the other kind of uh, active traders for the same, right? Just an extra one that I need. Yeah, I need to make a video on it. I mean, it'll, it'll take me like five minutes to do it, so. Uh, I'm just reading the chat. Someone said, does it matter when it comes to options? 
if the more contracts you get the harder it is to sell or it doesn't matter based on the number of contracts right uh you're only gonna have really a hard time trading uh i mean now if you know look at the liquidity this is super key on trading options okay let me go to volume why don't they, okay volume we'll just do this okay on the queues look at the volume if you're day trading this is key i need like two three four thousand to be super liquid some of you guys trading smaller can you know trade when it's a thousand you know like if you look at iwm right iwm's volume you know it's, it's a little bit lower but you can trade that if you're trading like one or two contracts and they're cheaper okay but qqq i need like four or five thousand at least many times we have well over that okay uh, but traders get into the issue when they're trading things like, you know, uh, Moderna, right? This is it within the queues. Look at the volume. I showed you the volume on the queues, like 7,000, 8,000, 13,000, okay? Look at this volume. When you see someone calling this out, calling something, and, you know, it's a stock that you know that it has super low volume, stay the hell away. Stay away. You are their liquidity. You are getting sucked into a trap. Okay, another one is like, I think Walmart's kind of low. Yeah, it's kind of low. I mean, I know Pepsi's low. Oh, dude, don't e I can't even trade Pepsi, right? This is not even touchable. Another one that's low, I think, uh, is Costco. Yeah, ugly, ugly options volume, right? I think uh, MU is kind of low. Yeah, it's pretty low. So, but look at QQQ, right? Look at SPY. Okay, look at Tesla. You want to trade high volume contracts, okay? Oh, yeah, Apple. Right? Look at that. That's cake. When it's high volume, what does it equate to? High volume equates to what? Liquidity, right? Tight spreads. Look at this spread. $13 spread, $10 spread. Look at QQQ. I bet they're like five bucks. Five to ten bucks. Look at that. Six bucks. Or is that good math? No, the seven bucks. Three dollars. Two dollars. Right? You can market buy. I, I don't really recommend it. I really recommend, you know, slapping ask or bidding in. Uh, above all else, bidding in is the best, but, you know, if, if you're just a slap-ass trader, I am. Um, you can do it relatively well on the queues because the spreads are so tight, right? But what if you slap the ask on, like, Moderna or you, or you buy, you know, market? You're already down 50 bucks instantly. You're down $30, right? About 5% instantly. You're down 10% instantly, right? Because you get filled on the ask, 550 and if you wanted to get out instantly, you'd be selling at a 10% loss at 5 bucks. You do not trade illiquid stocks, right? Or not stocks, but contracts. Okay. Forward here. All right, so, you know, tonight's lesson uh, lesson really boils down to discipline and patience, right? Two qualities that majority of retail traders lack. Okay, ask yourself right now, are you a disciplined trader? Are you a patient trader? And if you can't answer yes to both of those questions, then uh, that's okay, right? I mean, everyone is not going to be at that point instantly, not even in two or, you know, however long, two years or, or more, however long it's going to take you. Everyone has their own learning curve. Okay, but... If you can strive for that and look at that as a realistic kind of destination for you in regards to your trading, you can achieve it. I have been in your shoes, right? Like I said, I've been trading almost three and a half years now. It's, I mean, in the scheme of things, right? That's not super long. A lot of you guys would rather listen to someone trading 20 years or 39 years or, or even five years, right? It really boils down to you know, what you are looking at on your own journey. I've had so many people come to me and say, hey, you're doing that wrong. That's, you should do this. I don't give a shit, okay? 
Come and watch the stream. Watch me take trades every day. I have gotten this far because I followed my own path. Okay, and you must follow your own path. You must take what you can deem as beneficial to your trading style or journey. Take it along with you. Okay, delve on it, build upon it, refine it, make it your own system. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Damn, bro. Oh, is it at 15 frames? No, it's at 60. All right, we're good. We're good. So, um, you know, I really hope that these lessons have helped you guys, right? I'm going to wrap this up here in just a moment. Um, we didn't hit the, I guess everyone's sleeping, right? But we can do a, a giveaway, I guess. I'll just do two. These are for people who are not currently in the House of Stacks Discord. Sorry if you guys are in it, right? I still love you. But I want to give people who are like on the fence or like, you know, maybe they need help, right? They're just the opportunity to be able to, you know, see what the room is about. A lot of people are skeptical about it, right? Because they've been in bad rooms. I, I totally get it, okay? But, um, I mean, I don't know. Is your, uh, you know, your mentor on, on here doing edu sessions three or four times a week live trading every single day and uh i feel like one I, that we have and this may be bias right but probably the most focused and dedicated community that's very supportive as well i mean look at side trade right interviewing traders that have followed along through the house of stacks process okay uh we're not doing fomc that's yesterday not yet guys there's no keyword yet Look at you guys. Yeah, it, am I telling you guys about Chick-fil-A? I mean, I can't believe someone was like, this morning they were like, chicken for breakfast? I forgot who said that. I think it was in the group. And like, you know, being a Southerner, I was like, what? You said what, bro? <laughs> um, so, I am going to type a uh, keyword. The keyword is going to be QQQ, Okay. That's the keyword. You can go ahead and type that in if you want to. While uh, you guys are going through typing in and gathering, I'll give you guys a couple minutes here. Uh, while these poured in, I'm going to just go over a few things within the Discord. Okay, this is the live session link, right? And whenever you join the Discord, you get access to all of the previous lessons that we have had in the group. Right? If you want to learn more about supply and demand, we have plenty of videos covering that, right, that I've created myself. If you want to learn more about EMAs, I have EMA videos, right, technical analysis, refreshers, FOMC prep, small account help, how to simplify your trading, okay, how to execute options, how to trade options on Thinkorswim, how to trade the options contract chart like I showed you based off of supply and demand, psychological think tank group session, here's your 9 and 20 EMA strategy breakdown, supply and demand refresher, important main option strategies, all of that is located within the discord we also uh, i stream like i said every single day within the discord putting in all of my call outs that i mentioned on stream when i'm uh look right here taking 320 calls scaling out for 10 percent, scaling out more 50 contract gain i'll scale out over more over four bucks we got more over four bucks right in the money now 120 dollars per contract gain right i also say when i'm getting stopped out out of calls stopped out right all of the analysis that I'm talking about on the stream is ported into the Discord. We also have the pre-market prep starting at 8.30 every morning, covering over the directional analysis, where our zones are on the indexes, where they are on AMD. This really helps you compare your own levels, your own supply and demand zones to mine to see if you're doing these correctly. Okay, there's SPY as well for those SPY uh, traders, okay? Uh, we also have the skilled floor, right? where uh, skilled members, tr traders who have been trading in the group for a few months and uh, have proven themselves post uh, very good ideas. And uh, like I showed you guys earlier, the profits and percents, right? Traders, real traders, just like yourself, you know, coming in and making realistic uh, gains, right? 290 bucks, right? That's, you know, realistic. You lost 100 bucks, that's realistic, right? We're not showing you like, hey, this dude made 50K in a day, right? I mean, like you guys are newer traders. It's not meant to be like that. 
All right, so moving through here, um, if you want to join the Discord, you can check it out on the Discord link that I'm going to post in the chat. I think I have, let me see how many spots I think. Right now it says two spots left. I could probably add like maybe like one more or two more after this session tonight. Uh, but it looks like we have 85 uh, users, right? Remember, guys, you would type in QQQ if you want to enter into the giveaway. I mean, two out of 85, that's a pretty good chance. Probably a lot of members in the Discord as well. Like, like donuts, right? Uh, mention that. So, uh, here we go. I'll give it another minute, and we will go. There's no password for the drive. Yep, you just go to the Start Here channel, guys, in the Discord, and check it out. There's also, you can check out Donuts YouTube channel as well. Oh, uh, and a lot of the videos are on there as well. No, no, Jesus, Daddy. Um, but right tomorrow, I will not have a live session. Tomorrow's my anniversary, but I will be live trading tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday all on Twitch, okay? Uh, and I'll have some live sessions probably, probably the next one will be Thursday evening, um, maybe, maybe Thursday or Friday, so we'll see. Uh, but if you guys have enjoyed this session, I really hope that you guys have. Um, please check us out in the morning for the live trading stream, and uh, we'll get along during the FOMC day. I probably won't be on, I, actually I probably won't, I will not be on stream during FOMC. I really um, hope that you guys uh are responsible when it comes to that okay a lot of traders are like oh my god foaming at the mouth i need to trade fomc wait for the direction to be confirmed take a pullback or trade it candle by candle using the previous candle low or high as your risk and trade so uh we're gonna roll it here and it looks like stocky build 90 i don't know if this guy's in the group uh we'll wait uh stocky build are you in the group we're gonna do one more after this or maybe two more if he's not in the group yeah, thank you guys. What's a V <laughs> Uh is Stocky Build in the group? Uh, I guess not. Okay, so there's one. Just DM me on Twitch. Okay, DM me on Twitch and I will do one more, okay? Um I B Norton eighty eight. I B Norton eighty eight has one. Okay, I don't know if this guy's in the group either. Okay, okay. Yo, there you go. Woo. Yep. Make sure you guys check me out. Also, here, I can type this out. Uh, we might do one more. I know, you know, we always do just one more. I mean, it's just like taking a trade. I can only take... I always say it's my last trade, and then I do one more. Okay, but uh, if this stream helped you out, if you're on Twitch, right, type a one in the chat if this stream you found it helpful. Okay, you don't have... this. You've already entered on the queues, but... Hopefully, <laughs> donuts. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Uh, it'll be nine years. All right? I hope that this session really helped you guys. And, uh, you know, gauging supply and demand, understanding when trends are forming into consolidation phases so that you can prepare yourself um, in a sense that you are not biased and you're not trading based off of impulse. Okay, so we'll do one more. Uh, I be Norn, are we boyfriends now? Maybe. Hey, what's up, Sean? Nice, man. All right, one, two, three. Sunlit. Yo, I know Sunlit. This guy's from Real Ones. I know this guy. He just won. Yo, look, he's been following for a long time, too. Dude, this guy's an OG. Check him out, 71921. I think uh, it'll mark a year anniversary for Twitch when I first started streaming. I think it was like June 9th or something. So we'll do something special next month marking a one year anniversary on Twitch. Yo, Sunlight, are you standing in here, bro? I know Sunlight. I can DM him on on, uh, on uh, Discord. But yeah. <laughs> Look at Hannah. Yo, congrats, Sunlit. So you guys, send me a DM on Twitch, and I'll get you your uh, invite to the Discord for the month of May in the House of Stacks, right? If you also, if you want to uh, join, we will post a Discord link right here. 
I hope that you find these uh, sessions helpful, guys, and that it is progressing or helping progress your trading along the way, right? Trading, you guys will see the concepts I use, very simplistic. Trading does not have to be difficult, nor should it be, okay? Um, so I catch you guys tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to have some fun on the stream, uh, meaning that we're going to respect our risk, respect our rules and take profit on pivot breaks always. Okay. So I'll catch you guys eight 30 in the morning. Please get some rest. I appreciate you all for your time this evening. And of course, drink some water, hydrate. Okay. Lay off the beer guys. I see you in the morning. Thanks.